Scientific research has shown that ambitious women, even if they are young without children, get stuck in their career. This happens because many women don't understand how to play the game of building a successful career. If they don't manage to grow in their own organization, they find another job elsewhere. But then they realize that the same type of the game is played in any company or academic institution. Our next talk is about how to play the game of building a successful career strategically and without losing your own identity. You will learn about the differences between preferred feminine and masculine working styles and how to adopt different styles to reach your career goals. Please welcome on the stage Doctor of Engineering Mira Vasic, The Unwritten Rules of Marketing the Career Game. Hi, Mira, and welcome. Hi, hello. Hi to everyone. Hi. Hello. Hello. How are you? <laughs> Hi. Great to have you with us. Um, do you have slides? If you have, I can stay with you for a minute and you can share them so we can see them. Slides. Yeah, you can Absolutely, see them. Absolutely, I see them. So then I will leave the stage to you and we'll be back for a few minutes for the Q&A and you can also keep an eye on the chat if you'd like to take some, uh, some questions from the audience earlier. Enjoy. Sure. sure, thank you so much. So hello to everyone. Uh, today I'm gonna tell you more about the unwritten rules of making the career game and let's dive directly into it. So, first of all, I would like to tell you a little bit more about how I myself discovered some of these rules. So, besides being a trainer, workshop facilitator and career coach, I also have a PhD in structural engineering. And at some point of my study, I decided to do an abroad stage and to do a part of my research in another country. Uh, and for that, I needed additional funding. So I thought I'm gonna go to my supervisor and ask him for additional funding. So I prepared a lot on the content. Why should I go to that institution? What would that bring to my research? And so on and so on. So I come into the room, he was in the lab, and in the middle of the lab was this huge new testing machine, which probably took most of the funding money and probably left no money for my research. But okay, my supervisor was standing there with another professor. They were just looking at the machine with their hands in their pockets, looking at the machine. They were not speaking at all. So I came to them and I said, wow, the machine came. Shall I, shall I take a picture of the two of you with the machine? And they were like, yeah, sure, let's take a picture. So, so I took my phone, I took a picture of them and I started to talk to them. I was like, well, can you tell me more about the machine? What does that mean for our research? And they got very excited. They started to say, well, we are pioneering institution in Europe that has this machine. We spend a lot of money on it and it brings us a big status in this research. And I was like, okay, but what kind of tests can we do? And they started to show me the machine we did small and short tests and they were very enthusiastic about it. So we spent like more than 50 minutes, five zero minutes talking about the machine, about the status of the machine. And then in the last 10 minutes, I just asked for the funding and he was like, yeah, sure, why not? I'm gonna support you. I'm gonna give you more money for that. So this is one of the unwritten rules while I was preparing a lot on the content, and trust me, it is about the content, that is my feminine unwritten rule. The masculine unwritten rule is about the status, what this machine brought to our department, to our university. So paying attention to that, I also made my path a little bit easier. And I can imagine that for many of you, it can feel uncomfortable to use these kind of feminine or masculine and rituals to get what you want, but it's kind of riding a bike, you know. At the beginning, you feel quite uncomfortable on two wheels and you think that you're going to fall, but soon you start to cycle and you can arrive faster from point A to point B, and that's about it. Your goal is there. So in order to illustrate you better about where does this comes from, where do this feminine and masculine are written come from, 
I will show you a short video. It is from a research professor, Deborah Tannen. And after the video, we will have a short chat. So please have a look at the video and then we will make comments on it. Enjoy. Typically, a little girl. Oops. Let's a little girl has a best friend and she spends a lot of time sitting and talking. And it's talking that makes them best friends. A lot of what they do is telling each other secrets. Boys play in larger groups. It's the activity that's central. Their best friends are the ones they do everything with, not necessarily the one they tell everything to. Okay, so can you please now in the chat write which three differences did we see how the boys and girls are playing? So please write in the chat what three differences did we see how the girls and the boys are playing? So let's see for some comments. Yes, so the first difference is that talking versus doing. So what we saw is that girls spend a lot of time talking. They reflect a lot on what happened, what could they do, and so on. And boys connect a lot by doing. So for example, in my example from the beginning, when I came in and I saw the two professors, they were just standing there and looking at the machine. So that's the way how they bond, you know. So just they're doing something together. The second big difference is playing in pair, but then uh, playing in groups. So for example, the girls always have their best friend and they always choose their best friend for the play because that's the, 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 the only friend that they have actually. The boys, they play in groups and in these groups, there is a kind of unspoken hierarchy. So who has a bigger bike, whose mom can bake better cookies and so on. And this is very important later on. For example, if you think of choosing players for the group sport. So when boys are choosing the player, they're going to choose the best player for the game. But let's think that the best friend of a girl is not maybe the best player for that game. So maybe she's going to pick another girl. But in that case, probably you're not going to have your best friend anymore. So if we project this into the workplace, what happens then? Let's imagine that you're a project manager and you're spending a lot of time with your female colleague. You go for coffees, you go for lunch, and you tell her a lot about how you need a new person for your project. What she's thinking is that you are probably going to ask her to be that person, but you actually know that she doesn't have actually that expertise. So what you do actually, you're going to ask another team member for that role and your first colleague, will probably not go anymore with you for lunch. So take that also into account. The third difference is competition. So when you're playing in group, you're playing in rounds actually, and every round is one one. So let's imagine that boys are playing on a horse. So Peter and John, they're playing on their horse and they are bringing a sword. So Peter swings his sword and he takes John out of his horse. So what is John going to do? He's going to stand up and he's going to get back on his horse. Typically. And then the new round goes. So Peter and John, they are again going on their hose, horse. So now let's imagine that John swings his sword and takes Peter off the horse. So what's Peter going to do? He's going to stand up. He's going to get back on his horse and he's going to try again. So it is about competition and playing in rounds and keeping the game ongoing. So let's all imagine now that instead of John, we have Jenny. So Peter and Jenny, they're going to play on their horse. So they're go both going on their horse and Peter swings his sword and takes Jenny off the horse. I'm asking all of you that joined this event today, what do you think? What is Jenny going to do? Please write it in the chat. Let's see. So what is Jenny going to do in this case? She fell off the horse. So what will she do? Let's see. 
some ideas? Yeah, well, what she's going to do, she's going to cry, she's going to go to her mom, and she's going to say, oh, yeah, well, I, I, I took on the, on the horse, I felt of the horse, and so on. But what, what, what then happens is that John is still there, and, and he's waiting for her to get back. So there are a lot of you that might think that they will come back on the horse, but let's think now of a, of a work situation. Let's imagine that you want to uh, ask for a salary rise, and maybe some of you are planning to do that in, in the near future. So you prepare yourself, you come to your manager, and for the first example, let's imagine that your manager is a male. So you're coming to your manager and you're saying, well, you know, I would like to have a salary rise of 500 euros uh, per month. What is your male manager probably going to do? He's going to say, well, we don't have budget for that. It's not going to work. So the feminine unwritten rule will say, okay, he doesn't have a budget. It's a no. I will go back. Uh, maybe I'm going to do some coaching or some MBA study or some additional training. And then I'm going to go and ask next year. But your manager is there and he thinks, well, she got a no. So we are supposed to start negotiating now. Why did she quit? Negotiation. Okay. But what you can actually do to get back to your horse is giving your first argument. So once you hear that very first no, you will give your first argument and you will say, okay, I look at my results from last year and I had great results. So I think that I deserve a salary raise of 500 euros. And then he is going to say again, no. So he might say, well, you know, this is a very difficult time. It is Corona period now and, and I, I can't give you a salary rise. So what you're going to do then? Because you felt of your horse, you're going to get back. And how? By giving your second argument. So you're going to say, for example, well, I know that it is difficult. It is very difficult for everyone, but I believe that talent, results, and potential should be awarded in any kind of time. And you are getting back on your horse again, and you can communicate and negotiate again. So now let's imagine that um, we have um, a female manager and a male employee. Okay, so a guy is coming to his female manager and he's going to, to ask for a salary raise. He's going to ask for 500 euros a month, the same. So he comes there and he says, okay, I would like a 500 euros salary raise. And the lady is going to say, I'm sorry, we don't have money for that. So what is the guy then thinking? He's masculine in the rule. He says, oh, okay, well, now we are starting. It's going to be fun. We are going to negotiate now. So I'm going to bring my first argument. So he's going to bring his first argument. But the lady, she's going to say, okay, it is again no. And the guy's then going to see, oh, I am, she's so great in negotiation. Wow, it's really fun. So let's go again. So he's going to bring his next argument. And at that point, the female manager, she can get really frustrated. And she's going to say, well, which part of my no exactly you didn't understood? Because for feminine unwritten rule, no means no. So now I would like to show you the second video. So pay good attention to this video and then we will have a small discussion after it. My daughter ran up to there. Mine's up to the sky. Oh, man, my daughter ran up to heaven. Mine's oh. <laughs> Okay, so what we saw were little boys in a tunnel and people ask them, how high can you hit the ball? So what were the boys doing? Can you please write in the chat? So we heard them saying, I can hit my to the sky. I can hit my that, that, that far. So what they were doing? 
were they telling the truth? Let's see. Yeah, it's like Angela Merkel discussing Brexit with Boris Johnson. Yeah, so, so they were bragging. So what they were saying, it wasn't true, actually. But were they having fun? Yeah, yeah, they were having a lot of fun. So first unwritten rule, what they are saying, it doesn't have to be a truth, actually. The second unwritten rule, what they are doing is they are having fun. The third unwritten rule is keeping the game going. So one says an argument and he comes higher in the hierarchy, even if it is not truth. Then the next guy is on, on turn and then he says something and he goes higher in the hierarchy. And there is no limit. There is no top where they can reach. Okay, overestimating, bragging. We see a lot of comments in the chat. So let's imagine now that we take out one boy and we put a girl inside. So what would this girl say? What do you think? Write it in the chat. What would a girl say? Let's see. What do you think? What would a girl say in this tunnel? Yeah. Yeah, she would say that uh, that that's not true. She would say uh, what you are saying, that's not possible. And in that case, she's actually stopping the game. That is not true. We see another comment. So, so when you say that, the game stopped. And the boys will extremely dislike it. So what I always tell to women is, don't change yourself. You're always, you're already good as you are, but use your behavior strategically to reach your goals. Another common girls are more realistic. Yes, but the, be aware that the moment when you are start telling the truth, you might be called various names. And one of these names is a bitch. Yeah, you can be called a bitch, but for all of you that don't know what bitch means. It's being in a total control of yourself. So be proud of that. <laughs> there is another comment, very funny. The girl would say, why sit in a tunnel? Yeah, yeah. But be aware that boys like that the game goes on. If you project this to uh, a working situation, there is an example of Dutch Ministry of Finance. So past in the years, it was a man-dominated ministry. And when they were sitting on the table, they were there was a lot of bragging, exaggeration of their success, and so on. So in the years, the women became a majority in that ministry, and bragging became officially forbidden. But then when they started to do a survey of uh, employee satisfaction, they found out that employees, especially male employees, started to dislike the organization because bragging was forbidden. And they really like to brag and to keep it going, ongoing process. Another thing is what, what, what the girl would say, could say is I'm going to hit the ball so hard that it's never going to back, going to get back. So what happens in that case? So in that case, the girl came on the top of the hierarchy, but again, the game stopped and the game again, everyone will dislike it. So what I tell always, understand the unwritten rules, use them smart, use them strategically to reach more influence, to get more influence, and then you can change these rules. So let me show you some other of these rules. Uh, another one is, for example, celebrate your success. So what many women tend to do is making our success smaller. I will give you an example. So nowadays I'm talking to a lot of women that are, for example, starting a diversity and inclusion initiation in their company, that they are starting a female network at their university or a company. And what I always ask them is, have you put that on your CV? Have you wrote that on your LinkedIn? And what I always get is, no, 
I think it's just part of my job. Why would I brag about it uh, additionally? Well, it is not bragging. If you just say the truth that you are in charge of making a female network within your company, that's not bragging. It's telling the truth. So I invite all of you, if you are doing additional work, which are out of your role description, put it somewhere so that people can know about it and celebrate it. If you don't do that, there are many examples when things go wrong. I will give you one of them. A couple of months ago, I was coaching a woman and she was working for one of the famous Dutch banks. So she landed a very important client and it was just before the weekend. And she thought, well, I'm going to see my boss on Monday and I'm going to tell him all about it then. But in the meanwhile, her boss, actually the daughter of her boss, is playing rugby with the daughter of that client. And they saw each other on Sunday and the client said, well, what a great deal we made on Friday. And her boss had no clue about it. So it can really lead to problems. So if you have a good success, pick up that phone, pick up that internet and call your boss. Um, okay, uh, and then we come to another um, unwritten rule, and that is about putting out the fire. And here I would like to explain you two unwritten rules. First unwritten rule is what we call a disappearing act. A disappearing act is when women do a lot of relational work in order to make team functioning better, in order to keep ongoing a project working, but those results are not visible. Let's have an example. So Anna has organized this amazing event of uh, awards and she, 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 she spent a lot of her time on connecting people from all over the world. I can imagine that she did it during the night, during the day and so on. And she was very busy about it. But what she did very good is she gave an opening talk to all of us. And in this way, she very well profiled herself and branded herself. And we can all know how much of effort she did uh, in this event. But even more important, she didn't put the spotlight only on herself, but also on her ambassadors, also on the judges for this event, for the keynote lecturers, for all the people that were involved in marketing and so on. And all these relational work tends to be un, um, unnoticed. So that is one thing. The second thing is women tend to do a lot on preventing fire to start. And men tend to take a more risky function in the company or in, um, in, in let's say, finance or investments. And why is this important? Well, I had a woman that joined one of my workshops a couple of weeks ago, and she told me that in a yearly review, she got a remark that she never solved any problem in her department. And she was very unhappy about it. But what actually was happening it, is that she was doing a lot of work on preventing the fire to start. So she invested a lot of time into speaking to her team members. Are they okay in the corona time? Do they have enough of work uh, life balance? Do they are they happy with the flex work and so on? So all kinds of this work but but then the fire would not even start. So there were no problems. People were not getting sick. People were not getting a burnout. And that's why it was. It seemed that she was not uh, solving the problem. So what I always say is let the fire start sometimes, you know, and then you can come as a firefighter and turn off that fire and um, celebrate it as your success. Another unwritten rule is see it as a game. Women tend to take business 
too personal and they tend to feel offended if it doesn't work out how we imagined. A good example of that is getting a no. And that no might be only invitation for you to start negotiation, to start playing. And it, it could be easier for you if you see it as a game because many people actually see it as a game. So that would really make you feel easier. And I know that there are a lot of you um, struggling with an imposter syndrome and feeling that that you are on a certain position or given a certain opportunity because you are only because you are a woman or so on. And And for all of you, I really encourage you try to see it as a game, play, see how other people will uh, react to your behavior and, uh, and so on. So um, for the end, I would, I would like to invite all of you to follow me on LinkedIn and write me an email if you would like to, to continue this uh, conversation. And uh, of course, we've left a lot of time uh, for uh, for question and answer now. And uh, maybe Anna, you can tell uh, more about it. Yeah. Hi, Mira. That was great. Thank you very much. Some really great examples. I love the videos <laughs> when you started to explain things. How actually boys and girls, and then later men and women, and all these unwritten rules. I think uh, everyone who is listening to them and don't know them, or maybe no, but they still need to be reminded, should write them down so they become written rules when you need them, right? Yeah, exactly, yeah. There is a lot of discussion always, is it by nature or the way how we are grown up, the way how we are educated, and there is no uh, there is no real truth. It is always a combination. And this is the, the right. way we like to put it uh, really black and white so people can understand it. Yeah, absolutely. We have still some time to take one question from the audience. They're thanking you a lot. Great speech. Really great. Awesome. Oh, my God. I believe it was eye opening for many of our participants as well. And I did really enjoy it a lot. And we have time for one more question. If probably people have lots of questions, but maybe they would like to ask you personally them. Yeah, Angelique is telling that, uh, thank you, Mira, always great hearing you. So people already know you. One question here that we have now popping up. Um, we are more inclusive of decision. Um, we are more inclusive of decision. That is also bad in decision, inclusive in decision. Not sure I understand this question. Yeah, Adriana. Adriana, if you can please rephrase it. It was really amazing. Thank you, insightful session. Great. Um, people, Sujata is share, saying that she's sharing your view, probably <laughs> on the last point, all many views that we have. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, what Adriana asked. Uh, so uh, there is a lot of discussion nowadays, what is inclusion? Uh, right. And for me, for example, inclusion is making the person feels um, that has a, a, a tailored opportunity you know, and make it feel comfortable in organization. Uh, when taking a decision, we want to include more people. Yeah. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so in that sense, inclusion, it is about including people, but I feel it's more like tailoring to the special need of that person. And we all have our special needs, uh, each person. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, Sometimes it's in your not strong. Yeah, yeah. And then they can feel like they belong, people are saying. Yeah, absolutely. That's belonging in order to create belonging, the culture, the atmosphere. Yeah. We need also to create, to make sure that everyone is included because if they don't feel like they're included, they won't be able to belong, right? Yeah. When you talked about singing your own praises, at what point is it bragging as opposite to informing? There is a question from Bobby. Yeah. So what, what actually happens is, let's say that this is a level when you are saying 100% true about your success. Right. So what men tend to do, they brag, so they arrive to about 120% of what is actually true. What women tend to do is we use words such as small, short, 
quick, for example, I gave a short lecture, I made a, a, a brief contribution, I, I, I participated in a small project. And by doing that, we are going even lower about our success. So we are about 80% of telling the truth about our success. So what I always tell to women, please try to tell 100% truth about your success. And and, and don't use these small words, and then you will be at least at that 100%. So always tell the truth. And for example, if you graduated with honors, don't just say, I graduated, I'm proud that I graduated, but say, I'm proud that I graduated with honors. And it's truth, but just mention it. Yeah, that's a really good example. And I actually, I'm recalling now one thing. Once we've been recording a video featuring female engineers. So here I come to a female engineer and I'm asking her, like, hey, would you like to be part of our interview? And she's like, well, not, I'm not sure. I'm just, uh, I'm just uh, a front end engineer. I was like, why just? You are a front end engineer. Yeah. Be proud of that. It's like, not just, it's without just, you are a front end engineer, right? Exactly. And she was like, okay, if you think that, you know, I should be on this video. And then we ended up recording her and putting her in the video. It was really great. Um, but that's, again, what you're telling, actually telling, like, a little bit, like, diminishing, right, your, your yeah. achievements. So, like, yeah, exactly. So, so just, just forget about saying small and these kind of words and, and don't say sorry. Women tend to use sorry a lot. Like, sorry, can I ask a question? Or sorry, can I add something? Uh, there is no um, and no need to say sorry. You can just say, "Can I ask a question?" You know. Yeah. yeah. And maybe first two three times you will feel uncomfortable, but it's about practicing. And what I said about bike, think it always as riding a bike. At first you will feel uncomfortable, but just force stretch yourself a little bit, and then by time you will you will become more comfortable. Definitely. Absolutely. Here is another question from Agne. She says, I really like the idea of playing a game, but are we really sure male colleagues want to play the game with women? Maybe they just want to play with other guys. Yeah, that, that, can, uh, that can also happen. I heard many stories. I heard women trying to talk to men in companies and men just ignoring them at a coffee machine and so on. So that's a typical example of that. And that's difficult. But that's reality. So if we want to have that kind of change, we need institutional support. So really organizational transformation into inclusive and diverse uh, workplace. So if that happens to you, ask for help. Ask for help of your colleagues, of your HRs, of your peers, of people from outside of your company, because this is a real struggle. And, 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 and unfortunately, it it's still in 2020, it happens. All right, good good tips. Yeah. Here is another question from Ambreen. She said, loved it, Mira. Probably again, your, your comments or talk. So sometimes lack of knowledge can create a problem for a woman in a management position, which can make juniors judge her. How can we go about it? Yeah, so what we saw also in my first example is status matters, especially to men. So um, let's let's think of example of a woman that was promoted to a manager role. And until then, she was riding a very small car. But uh, all of her colleagues at that manager role are driving a, a big, huge car. And they come to their work at big, with their big, huge car. So in that case, if she would get the same car, and this is a uh, quite, quite simple example, black and white, just for you to understand, that could bring her higher in the hierarchy and i know that for many women this this sounds very stupid and nonsense because we tend to care only about the content but if you want a practical advice get a big car like the other people have all right here is a question from Anne: what should i do if i have a male boss that many times don't acknowledge my skills he thinks that i cannot do the task because he doesn't trust that i can do it so what you can ask, you can ask questions. That's always good. So ask your mom, mm -hmm. what do you think, why I can't do that? Which mm -hmm. kind of skills do you think that I need to do? So ask a lot of questions. Ask, for example, well, can you give me an example of a colleague that can do that? Or why do you think that the other person can do that? And, and try to ask a lot of questions in that case. 
yeah asking questions help you to get answers and maybe for your boss to understand that well actually you do have the skills so why he thinks that you don't right yeah yeah Absolutely. and let the other person talk you know with with the negotiation of salary what i said women tend to talk a lot in those situations because it's very important for us mm -hmm. so we like to talk so what i always say if you're going to ask for something just come and ask one sentence and then close your mouth. It is wait, <laughs> really, but ask and wait. Doesn't matter. It will be silence. Let it be silence. Five seconds, five minutes. Let the other person says. And then, when you have to give your argument, one argument, one sentence, and just wait. That's a really good, good tip. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, here is one more question. How to prepare from an an a bomb? How to how do you better prepare yourself for a role that you're not qualified but are willing to put in the work to get the job done? Let's say how do you handle rejection emails? Yeah. So so uh if well, first of all, what 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 practice has shown is that men apply for a role as soon as they satisfy 40 to 60% of the requirements. And women tend to try to apply for the roles where only, only when they satisfy 100% of, right. of their role. And that's that bragging, blocking part. Okay, mm -hmm. so make yourself more comfortable. Think of your first job. So when you're looking for a first job, you don't have any practical experience, basically, apart from maybe some internship. But what you're hired for is your potential. So think of that for every next role. And what you want, you want a challenging role that you haven't done before because you want to be challenged in that role. And then it is normal that you don't have that experience, but you have that potential. So think always of that. You're going to be hired and paid for your potential because what you did in the past, you already got paid for that, you know? Right your new manager is not going to pay you for what you already did in the past so think of your potential yeah and aim higher don't yeah. be afraid i think very often uh, women might not apply but they miss out the opportunities that they are already actually qualified for and then they do something that they are underqualified for or Definitely. start doing right Definitely. so you need to have this room for growth right yeah what I like to give, I always like to give example of salary. You know, people will think that they talk only about the money, but that's the way that those are the examples that people relate most. So I was coaching a brilliant young woman and she wanted to ask for a salary raise. And she told me, Mira, I'm going to ask 10%. And I said, well, what kind of percent would make you happy and it would make you feeling valuable? And she said, well, you know, I'm going to be happy only with 20%. And I said, well, no, no, why, that's why on earth are you going to ask 10%? Then you're never going to get to 20. So yeah. so really encouraged you. And she asked 25%. She got 20. And she also got reimbursed for the past year of, 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 the, of the pay difference. Cool. I just wanted to say that you need to ask for more if you want to get 20. <laughs> because you need to negotiate. And if you say, you go, hey, I want a 30% raise because of this and that I did or and I can do, that's how I can help your company bring more money, for example. And then you ask for more and then you do negotiation and maybe you get even 25. Who knows, right? Very good, Anna. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mira. It was fantastic. We had really yeah. great discussion with the audience. Great advice, great tips. Silence can be powerful. That's being that's women being more apologetic that's also a really insightful idea thank you very much mira i'm wishing you a great day stay with us do some networking and see you soon at our events Bye -bye. Definitely. take care and see you soon bye bye